Welcome everyone to day two of my 30 Days of Taker video series. That's right, day two of 30. A video relating to The Undertaker in some way, shape, or form every single day in the month of November. What could possibly go wrong here? So anyways, the theme of today's video, it's a Q&A video. And thanks to all of you that participated by asking your questions via Twitter. We're looking today specifically at the early run of The Undertaker around 1990 Survivor Series in his debut till 1995. So that was the scope of it. If you ask questions that were outside of that scope, I did not pull them into here. So we're going to see how this goes. MC Psycho 417 asks first, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, why wouldn't you? Especially since you're getting 30 days of The Undertaker. That's his question. No, it's not. Uh, MC Cycle 470 does kick us off with his legitimate question. Did you ever hear that Taker hates cucumbers and that Paul Bear used to rib him about it? N no. <laughs> Maybe I've heard this and I don't realize it and don't remember it, but I don't think I ever have. I, I just missed that. He says, <laughs> he hates cucumbers. Good. Cucumbers are stupid. <laughs> That's fantastic. Jonathan Gonzalez asks, As someone who hasn't seen a lot of Undertaker's early matches, uh, what would be a good feud to go and watch? I got two for you. Kamala and Giant Gonzalez. Shut up, everybody. I'm helping Jonathan here. Kamala and Giant Gonzalez. Do you want to go in a different trajectory, maybe the ultimate warrior, Jake the Snake Roberts, but maybe Yokozuna as well. But in reality, you gots to get you some of that Kamala, Kamala action. You got to. Got to get yourself some Giant Gonzalez action. Certainly. And you could go fake Undertaker action, because why not? So many wonderful possibilities to draw off of. <laughs> Wrestling Rants, next question for us. How much different could Taker's career have been if he lost one of his very early WrestleMania matches and the streak never got enough momentum to begin? Man, that is a fascinating question. Like, let's say if he had lost to Giant Gonzalez, maybe, at WrestleMania 9. Like, maybe if he had won every other match after that, he would still have some type of streak, but it wouldn't carry the same type of weight to some type of importance of The Undertaker never lost at WrestleMania. Like, that's a great question, man. Talk about a great WWE wrestling what if. That's one of them. Why don't you guys tell me in the comments what you think would have happened to Taker's career if he didn't have the streak because he lost some time earlier in his career. Rick Styles, 1985. Would you rank the Warrior Feud in 91 as a top five Undertaker rivalry? Early career, like early first four to five years, probably. All time, certainly not. Kyle Garner, 92. As a fan who didn't start watching wrestling until 2001, I started with the American Badass. The only thing I hate more than the American Badass Taker is Big Evil Taker. <laughs> as someone is, who watched him debut, what were your original thoughts on Undertaker as a character? He scared the crap out of me. I was nine years old. What the hell was my reaction going to be? But you were like mesmerized at the same time. Like, this is a freaky dude. He scared the bejesus out of me. And then later on, if it wasn't him scaring me, it was Paul Bear who really frightened the hell out of young Schleggy. And I'm not the only one. Like, a lot of people in my age bracket will tell you early career takers scared the hell out of them, but Paul Bear frightened them. Oh, yeah! Well, that's what happens when you smoke. You lose your ability to do the Paul Bear voice anymore. But, yeah, that's my early impression of him. He scared the hell out of me. But, like I said, as always, even from the very beginning of him in WWF, like, I was, I was drawn to him. Like, there was certainly an appeal there. Couldn't take my eyes off of him. Like, he was larger than life. Peter Gunn 500. What was your favorite feud involving Undertaker from 90 to 95, and what was your least favorite? <laughs> Oh, God, least favorite. 
man, you talk about a dude that had to persevere, overcome a lot of crappy uh, programs and feuds early in his career. It's The Undertaker. There's so many of them were so bad. Um, I don't even know that I like that feud with him and Hogan in 91 all that much. Much rather prefer, like, Warrior or Jake the Snake or something like that. Maybe Yoko. Um, but, yeah, lots of bad, like, least favorites. Giant Gonzalez has to be at the top of the list. But for the person that asked the question earlier, you pay me no never mind, Jonathan Gonzalez. That is my personal opinion. My personal opinion is known to be wrong sometimes. You go watch everything involving Kamala, Giant Gonzalez. You'll go away with it with a greater appreciation for The Undertaker, I promise you. Power Spy in one asks, who would have made a better WrestleMania opponent, Hulk Hogan or Bret Hart? You know, the dynamics in the ring between Hogan and Taker were always off. Like, it's just a weird kind of vibe that those guys had. You know, whether it be early career, like you're talking about Survivor Series, or Tuesday in Texas. Are you talking about 2002 run Hogan versus Taker? It's just weird. It just really didn't click. It didn't work. Uh, Taker and Bret Hart could actually have some good matches. So I think in terms of a better WrestleMania opponent, I think it's Bret Hart beyond question. B. Green underscore machine asks, what was one thing about The Undertaker's character that you personally were not a fan of at first, but grew to love about his character later on in his career progressed? At the very beginning, the fact that he scared the ever-loving hell out of me and Paul Bear frightened the hell out of little Schleggy. I couldn't stand that. But then eventually, when he turned face and he saved Elizabeth and Macho Man from getting hit by the chair by Jake the Snake Roberts, well, I think it was cool at that point in time. And he started to grow, to have an appreciation and an admiration for the character. Like, he was awesome. Like, so initially, the fact that he was a heel, and certainly when I was younger, like, he was going after Hogan and everything else, like, not cool. Not cool. But gave it some time, and man, glad I did. Uh, what did you think of his feud with Yoko Zuna? You know, the, ironically, the feud with Yoko comes at a time that I didn't really watch WWF all that much. Like I would, I would stay up, I would read magazines, and I would try to catch shows here or there. Go, go sneak to friends' houses where they might have it. I guess I actually used to have some friends back in the day. You know, not that many. Don't mind. Um, but hmm. Jerry Adams. If Flair never came into the WWF, would the 92 Rumble have been the right time for Undertaker to win it? Um, it's an interesting question because part of the challenge, I think, with Taker, especially in those early days, is you did not want to beat him a whole lot. You did not want him to lose a whole lot. You couldn't have him be the dead man and jobbing out to everybody. So you had to kind of protect his character a little bit, which is why you didn't put the belt on him a ton. You know, which... You look back, and I, I'm even talking about that, I think, in, later on in this month in this video series, talking about whether Taker should have been world champion more than he was. Um, but when you look at it, no, I don't think so. Because you would have had to find a way to get him get the strap off of him, and nah, I don't think so. Little DJ Boy asks, what were the factors that held back Taker as the face of the company? It's unbelievable we got Diesel as the face, but not Taker. I think Taker in some ways was a face of the company, but as I called out before, in the early years especially, with the character, the lack of other real true big stars that you had, you would bring in you know guys or feature guys specifically to have them feud with Taker, but it was in a way where Taker in a lot of ways could go over because you're trying to protect the character. You can't really make him big menacing the dead man if he's losing and jobbing all over the damn place. So it makes sense that a guy like Diesel who also at the time, his character uh, was more about um, getting out there in the public and, you know, being the baby face, whereas Taker was a baby face, but a different type of baby face. There was a bit of mystery to him and an aura about him, like he wanted to keep him as a special attraction. Like, I could understand why they did it. I could certainly understand why they did it. Um, doesn't mean it was the right decision or not. It just means that I could certainly understand it. Uh, do you think Undertaker should have won the 1995 King of the Ring by beating Sean in the finals? I think anybody other than who they have won the 1995 King of the Ring would have probably been a good decision. EJ Dennis 96. 
If Taker didn't get injured in 1994, who would he have wrestled at WrestleMania 10? That is a fantastic question. I'm thinking here. Like, where would you have shoehorned him in? Did you have Brett versus Owen? That wasn't going to change. You had Luger versus Yoko. Maybe, maybe that's where. Maybe in '94, if you want to do that thing with, you know, the tie at the Rumble, then maybe you put Taker in that place instead of Luger. That'd be the best thing that I could think of. It'd be the best thing that I could think of. Um, Byron Andreas asked, "Who would you have liked to have seen the Undertaker versus Dusty Rhodes?" Um. I get the very, very beginning, just as he was coming in, maybe. Especially if you're going to have Dusty there for WrestleMania Seven, like you want, you want to get somebody over in a big way. I don't know that Dusty would have signed up for something like that. I mean, with a guy like Taker, but man, it would have gotten him over in a big way. Instead, it would have been a better result, I think, than Snuka. But I'm not sure if the dynamics would have really worked, especially with who Dusty was at that time and the character that he was portraying. Dallas Croyer, how good do you think an Undertaker versus Andre match would have been if Andre was Taker's first streak victim? Especially when you go back to 91 and as physically beat up and broken down as Andre's body was, that match wouldn't have worked. It would have been horrible. Like even, even a slightly healthier Andre, let's say from the mid-80s, and you transpose him to the nine, early 90s, he still had a lot of physical ailments. Like, how's Taker going to hit the uh, Tombstone pile driver? Hell, you could even ask, like, how's Taker even going to hit the choke slam? Like, could Andre have sustained that? He probably could have. That would have had to have been the finish. Um, that said, though, like, if you would have been in a place where Andre was still physically able to go in the ring enough to be able to put on some type of WrestleMania-worthy match, like, especially Andre having been turned babyface after WrestleMania six, like, that would have been a great first opponent at WrestleMania for The Undertaker. Like, that would be the ideal one. Like, here's the greatest giant in wrestling history up to that point in time, and he's making way for the new guy. And, man, that would have sent Taker's career trajectory roaring if he would have been beating Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 7. Good Lord. Um, but the match itself would have stunk. <laughs> it would have absolutely stunk. Alex closes us out by asking, do you think that they saved Taker's character in the beginning by using Paul Bear instead of sticking with Brother Love? Yes. Like, especially as you went through the first 6 to 12 to 18 months and going forward. Like, the Brother, Brother Love gimmick was very good. Like, you have to give Bruce Pritchard a lot of credit. That was a good gimmick. Like, you look back on it and you say, you know, he did some good shit. Like, he was a really good heel character good talker, good character, good personality for the role that he was in. But as a manager, like, Paul Bear was it, man. So criminally underrated and underappreciated in my mind. But brother love with Taker for a period of time could have worked and he'd been okay. Paul Bear was the icing on the cake. He put the Taker gimmick and character over the top. He made all of it work. Like, you couldn't have done some of the stuff you did, some of the vignettes you did in the early and mid-90s with Taker if you had Brother Love as a manager as opposed to Paul Bearer. So, yeah, I think Paul Bearer was a critical piece of the puzzle. He was absolutely crucial to that Undertaker character in its early years. Absolutely. Well, that wraps up this original Taker Q&A video. Got a few more Taker-themed Q&A videos throughout the month. Uh, reminder that this is day two video of the 30 Days of the Undertaker video series. It's going to be a video a day. The next one I'm going to upload on Tuesday, November 3rd, is going to be a review of the Undertaker's Last Ride documentary on the WWE Network. I'm trying to finish up actually watching the whole thing because I have not up to this point watched the entire thing. So trying to finish watching that up. So that way I can come on here and talk about it and do a review of it. So smash that subscribe button. Make sure you keep coming back all month long for more Taker-related content on this 30 Days of Taker celebration. I don't know, T.R. Central.